for what felt like an eternity, twirling and disjointed images plagued Don DeLay. He couldn't tell where he was or what was happening, but he was surrounded by darkness, and yet he had no difficulty seeing the terrifying visions on all sides. Beasts the size of mountains, framed images that spoke in menacing words, swarms of dark-winged creatures swooping down on him from all sides, dark stones that sent out invisible tendrils of evil and malice to ensnare those closest to them. They were unearthly visions, not at all grounded in genuine facts or experiences. It was the kind of imagery that only a nightmare could produce. At last, however, the images began to vanish, and Don slowly realized that he'd been in a great deal of pain until recently, because it was starting to fade away as well. All that was left was the darkness, and as Don began to regain some sense of himself, he realized that it was only there because his eyes were still closed. A moment later, Don tried to open his eyes, but that was hardly comfortable because of the glare of the sunlight coming in through a nearby window. As he started to get used to the light, however, he noticed that he was very hungry and absolutely parched, but at least the pain in his back was gone. For a moment, though, he wasn't sure where he was or what was happening. A number of clues about his situation filled Don's mind as he lay still. The fact that he felt hungry meant that he was still alive, of course, and as his vision started to clear, he got the impression that he was lying on a bed with a blue blanket. The room he was in seemed to mainly be wooden in construction, and he definitely didn't recognize it. Still, it was already becoming obvious what had happened. The people of Arin must have found him after the fight and saved his life, treating his wounds and putting him in that bed. Of course, Don felt incredibly relieved to still be alive, though he might have still been injured, for all he knew. There was no way for him to know, really, until he could meet with his doctor and talk to them. Don had been treated by doctors before for minor injuries, and he always asked the same thing in the end. Will I still be able to become a knight? However, that time, Don didn't get the chance to ask his doctor that time-honored question, because only a few minutes after he'd woken up, Sylvia walked through the only doorway into that room. She had a short sword attached to her belt and a plate in her hands, with what looked like roast lamb and an apple on it. However, the moment that Sylvia noticed that Don was awake, she put the dish down on a table right next to his bed and straightened up, looking surprised, but very pleased. Ha! <laughs> How about that? Sylvia asked, looking both amazed and amused for some reason. You're out for a day and a half, and the only fifteen minutes I pick to get lunch, you wake up. What are you talking about? Don asked, openly confused by that point. Never mind. Sylvia replied, however. It's not important. For several seconds after that, neither one of them said anything, but Don's eyes slowly started wandering towards the plate in no time, at which point Sylvia just chuckled. Yeah, she said after just a moment. Go ahead. I can always get more later. Besides, it's been longer since you've eaten. You need more after what you went through. Immediately, Don seized the apple and took a bite out of it, holding that bite in his mouth until all the juice had gone down his throat, then took another bite, treating it the same way. After that, he was feeling a little less thirsty and moved on to the meat. Inside of 20 minutes, Don had managed to finish all the food, and he was still a little hungry, but he knew that he'd at least be able to survive. So what's up? Don asked curiously. Will I be all right? At first, Sylvia looked puzzled by Don's question, as if she didn't understand what he was asking her at all. But after a moment, a look of realization dawned on her, and she replied to him as quickly as she could. You mean medically? You'll be fine. You had a broken leg and two cracked ribs, as well as massive bruises and scrapes along the skin. A large part of your back had been torn away, too. But every Jara Master in the city wanted to help heal you after the stunt you pulled. At this point, you're as good as new, and I mean that. There's no trace of what happened anymore. No weakening of the bones, no leftover cuts, scabs, or scars. You'll be just fine. Don't worry about it. Don was relieved to hear that, because not only did it mean that he could continue his training, but he could also move right on to other topics. Sylvia still looked a little sad, though, despite the good news she'd been giving him up to that point. So did anybody ever figure out what happened to Grant? Don asked, changing the subject quickly. We were hoping you could tell us that. Sylvia replied, however, with a shake of her head. When we found you, he was completely gone. You were alone under a rock with another big pile of rocks and dust right next to you. He was the dust. Don tried to explain for another couple of seconds. I don't know how it happened or why, but when Grant caused that landslide that finally killed him, he said something about how he'd been waiting for a great warrior to come along and beat him in single combat. Then he just turned to dust. As Don said that, though, Sylvia started to look stunned, as though she were just realizing something that Don had reminded her of. What's wrong? Don asked, recognizing the look of surprise on the pregnant woman's face. Do you know what he was talking about? I... I think so. Sylvia replied nervously. I still have the Book of Legends that described Grant's curse, and I read through it every year. It said that for his treachery against the sorcerer and against the dictates of righteousness, he was condemned to seek battle from the people of Arryn every 100 years until his craving was satisfied. Yeah, Don replied, however, nodding quickly as he started to make the same connection. That's just what he said to me before he fell to pieces. He told me that he was satisfied to have been beaten in single combat. 
The look of amazement never left Sylvia's face at any point during that discussion, but she was also starting to smile a little more after Don said that. Don? Sylvia muttered, starting to sound confused. It was an accident, right? I mean, you didn't plan it all out this way, did you? Well, not from the start, Don admitted. But I did plan on tricking him into covering himself in pine tar, and I also meant to goad him into causing that landslide. I didn't think it was going to kill him at first, though. <laughs> Incredible, Sylvia said to herself at last, though she didn't take her eyes off Don. You really did plan it all out. You did beat Grant in single combat. Don, nobody in Arryn has ever been able to rout Grant without casualties before, and that's really special. But beating him all by yourself? I mean, how could you possibly do that? Well, I, I don't really think I beat him exactly. Don replied, already feeling a bit uncomfortable. Pretty much everything that happened was his fault. I was just kind of there. Well, regardless, it seems like you might have ended the curse, Sylvia just said. Grant's curse was supposed to continue until his craving for battle was satisfied, and he's never been beaten in single combat since then. If that's really what he was looking for, and he thought that you gave it to him, then he might never appear again. Of course, we won't know for certain for a hundred more years, but if you really ended Grant's curse, then that could be one of the best things that's ever happened to the people of Arryn. We all owe you a huge debt. Huh. Don just muttered, though, clearly feeling distracted. You said nobody was killed? Nobody? That's good. What happened to Antoine and Harold? They look pretty beat up. Their injuries were pretty bad, Sylvia admitted. But no worse than yours. They've been up and about for almost a whole day. Don's face fell when he heard that, however, because he had a feeling that his next question was probably going to have a less satisfying answer. How'd they take the news? For a short time, Sylvia had been smiling, but when Don asked her that, her smile disappeared again, and she looked at the floor in shame. Don didn't know what those two had done that was making Sylvia feel so rotten, but obviously his problems weren't over yet, in spite of all the dangers and trials that he'd faced. Something else was truly wrong. Don, Sylvia eventually said with a lot of sadness in her voice, maybe you shouldn't have tried to train under Antoine. Don wasn't sure what that had to do with anything, until a few moments later when Sylvia started to explain the problem. Harold and Antoine are at kind of a sticky point right now, Sylvia began. Their rivalry is so bitter that they're starting to see every opportunity in terms of how each one can use it to discredit the other. That's the only explanation for what's happened since Grant's death. Both of them wanted to beat Grant, Sylvia continued after a pause of only a couple of seconds. They wanted it more than anything. They both knew that if one of them could beat Grant and the other couldn't, it would prove once and for all which of their fighting methods was superior in the eyes of the public. I could tell that both of them had been devastated by their failure to beat Grant, and when they woke up and realized that you'd beaten him, at first they couldn't believe it. We had to show them the evidence, that you were still in bed recovering from your wounds, and that Grant was most definitely missing. They heard testimonies from the other soldiers that none of them had even touched Grant with their weapons. He was gone, and you were still there, and eventually it seemed like they were going to have to accept that you'd conquered the enemy of Arryn. But after about an hour, Antoine said that since you were his student, his technique must have been the best one. Of course, Harold insisted that that was impossible, because he'd only seen you once before, and after a couple of hours, it was too late to take back what had been said. The rivalry is worse now than it's ever been. Even with Grant gone, I, I don't feel safe anymore. This ridiculous feud divided Arryn before, but now it's being torn to shreds by it. People aren't even talking in the streets anymore. I'm scared this thing won't ever stop. I mean, if Grant's last big attack couldn't stop it. At that point, Sylvia fell silent. She was clearly afraid for her husband, her brother, and her whole town. She might even have been afraid for herself, though she seemed to be hiding that well. But when she looked up at Don again, the expression on his face was entirely devoid of fear. He was only showing determination and courage to her. The reason why Don was only showing those feelings was because for the moment, those were the only ones he was noticing. The experience of that battle had really changed him a lot more than he'd realized at first. Don had faced an enemy so mighty and ferocious that it had made grown men tremble from the mere sound of its voice, and yet he'd done all that he could against it and come out victorious. He'd faced the horrors of mortal danger and pulled through unscathed, and although no wounds were left over from that battle on Don's body, he'd been changed forever by what he'd just gone through. Though he was still very much a little boy, he was starting to mature and learn the virtues of the true way, not merely because of his schooling, but because he knew he needed them.